Hey everyone, Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. This video is going to cover virtual work. Okay, so we're going to talk about the method of virtual work, uh, what kind of problems that you can solve with it, and then we're going to solve this frame using the virtual work method to determine the rotation at joint C of the frame using the virtual work method. So let's go ahead and let's jump right into the problem. So we're given a frame here, okay, A, B, C, D, we've labeled it. We have a 1.5 uh, kit per foot distributed load here, uniform. We have a point load of 40 kip here. Uh, we have a pin and a roller, and we have uh, our E, I, and our uh, also the knowledge that E, I is constant. Virtual work is a method that we use to determine either the deflection or the rotation at a point in a frame or a, it could be a beam or, or a truss. So in this case, we're working with a frame, and now we can go ahead and just count the number of reactions on this frame and we should be able to determine whether or not the virtual work method applies because that's the first thing you want to do. Virtual work is only applicable in determinate structures. Okay, you will see it used in, for example, when we do a force, uh, the method of consistent deformations, when you can remove a redundant force and then the resulting structure becomes determinate and you can use the virtual work method. But in this case, uh, we're just given a, a determinate structure. Sometimes in the test, they won't tell you to use the virtual work method. That's also another trick. They'll just say solve it. And sometimes it's indeterminate, sometimes it's determinate. So let's go ahead and let's start the problem by counting the number of reactions. So we have a pin here, so that's a reaction in X, reaction in Y. And we have a Y reaction at D, so that's three uh, reactions. Okay, And as you know, we have three equilibrium equations. So this is a determinate structure. So we can go ahead and we can begin. So the virtual work method consists of two steps. Uh, at the beginning. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to divide this structure into the virtual system and the real system. The real system is the same thing with the loads uh, just, just as it is and you're going to go ahead and solve the reactions and I'm going to show you a, a little trick on how to cut the beam at, at, at the joint here and make your life a little easier at the end. The virtual system is where we're going to remove the loadings, the external loadings, and we're going to replace the, uh, the external loadings with a point load. In this case, it's going to be a point rotation because we're determining rotation at the point that we're considering. So joint C, we're going to replace uh, joint C. Well, we're not going to replace joint C, but we're going to take out these loads and we're going to add a one kip foot rotation at point C. So let's go ahead and start that. So we have the real system. I'm just going to start by writing down here for the real system. All right. And we have our frame okay and we as i said before in the real system the loads remain intact and now all we're going to have to do really here is just to go ahead and solve the reactions so that's not so bad uh, right off the bat we can immediately tell that since, since there's only one force in the horizontal direction this is also going to be or equal to that force in the horizontal direction it must be and now, then we can go ahead and start to solve the rest. So we know that we're going to have a reaction at D and a reaction at A. And if we go ahead and just let's take the moment about A, okay, with counterclockwise being uh, positive. Okay, we'll take a moment. We have negative 40 times 12. We have, this is going also to be negative. We have 1.5 minus 1.5 times 30 times 15, so 30 divided by 2, plus dy times 30, okay? And if we go ahead and calculate that, all right, so we have 38, okay, 0.5 kip, and that is equal to dy. Very good, so 38.5 for the vertical reaction there. And if we just sum the forces here, okay, we could do uh, 38.5 plus 1.5 times 30, and we could just subtract that, or multiply that by negative one, and that'll give us Ay, which is equal to, in this case, 6.5 kips. Very good, so we've solved the reactions for the real system. I'm gonna take the virtual system up here, and the virtual system, okay, is going to just be the same frame, but like I said, with a all the real the external loadings are removed, and we have a one unit rotation at the point that we want to consider the rotation, that we want to figure out where what the rotation is at that point. Still 30. This is 12, and this is 12 feet. 
Okay, so, and, uh, well, we can go ahead and we just know that this is going to be zero because there's no forces in the x, right? So this is zero. So we go ahead and take the moment today. We, we're, we're going to have only two, um, only two forces acting. We have the one kip feet moment, okay? That is in the negative direction, so you have negative one. Then we have plus dy times 30 equals zero. So dy here is going to be one over 30. Okay, so that's going to be very good. And if we go come over here, and this is going to be negative actually, because there's no other external forces acting on this, this also has to be one over 30, and that is going to be equal to ay. Very good, so we have ay is one over 30 down, dy is one over 30 up, and uh, that's the virtual system done. Perfect, so what's the next step here? Well, the next step is we're going to have to, and this is the next step in any virtual work problem, okay, so now that you've gone ahead and you've solved the reactions for both the real system and the virtual system, you're gonna, go, gonna wanna go ahead and make a table. All right, so what does this table mean? Well, what we're gonna have to do, okay, is we're going to have to take, we're gonna have to cut the, both the real system and the virtual system, and we're going to have to create an expression or an integration for each member of the frame. Okay, and we're gonna to have to do that for both the real system and the virtual system. And then what we're going to do after this is we're going to plug this into the virtual work formula for deflection, okay? And you'll see how that works. If you're a little bit lost right now, it'll all come together at the end, so don't worry too much right now. The rotation at C is equal to sigma mv m over e i, and that's the integration dx, okay? So we have the sum of the integration, okay, of mv times m over ei, okay? So that's the integration of each member of the beam, okay? And each, when I say each member, I mean if, for example, if there's a 40 kip, kip loading here, we need to do a, b, and then we need to do b, c as well, okay? So we need to consider every, when, whenever there's a load, it's, it's just like, for example, writing a bending moment diagram and using the equation method. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So if we take a look at the real system first, okay, um, the, the trick in the virtual work method is to choose the correct spot in order to uh, take your origin, okay? So let's look first at segment AB. Okay, so we're gonna look at segment AB first. Okay, we can't take AC because there's a load in the middle. So we have to look at AB first, then we can look at BC. So if our origin is A and this is 12 feet, that means that we're starting at zero and we're going to 12. So the limits are from zero to 12, okay? That's gonna be the limits and the integration. And what is M? Well, M, okay, if we go ahead and we look at segment A, B, okay, I'm just gonna write it down here. What that's gonna look like is we're going to have, we have 40 kips here, okay, and then we've cut the beam before B, okay, and we have a moment at the end, right? We have a shear and a moment, but we're only considering the moment here, so we're not even going to bother, it, bother with that. And this is M. Perfect, pretty simple, right? This force obviously isn't going to create a moment, so we don't have to worry about that. And all we need to do is solve for m. Pretty simple, and this is a and this is b. So we have this variable distance here, which is x, so we don't know what the distance is exactly. We want to find the distance in terms of x. So that's pretty simple, what's m? m is distance times the force, so we have 40x. Okay, so that's for a, b, right? And so we're gonna take m equals 40x, and we're just gonna put it over here. Simple as that. Let's go ahead and let's take a look at AB for the virtual system. So AB here, as you can see, we don't have a force here creating a moment, so that's simply just going to be zero, right? Because if we were to do exactly the same thing, we were to cut here at, uh, at B, right before B, and take a look at this loading here, nothing there is creating a moment, there's no external forces, it's zero. Let's move on, let's take a look at segment CB now. Okay, so what we could do is we could cut again past B, and take the origin as A. What, what's gonna happen there is we're gonna have a very messy M formula. Okay, we're gonna have multiple X's and we're gonna have to integrate that by hand during the test, that's gonna be difficult. So what's gonna make our life easier is if instead of taking the origin at A, we take the origin at C. Okay, and once again, the limits are going to be from zero to 12 because we're starting at C as our origin. Now, what we're gonna have to do though, and this is really simple, okay, is for CB, okay, we can cut the beam at the joint. So we're just gonna cut it at the joint, okay? We're gonna separate that, 
And if we cut at the joint, that means we're going to create a force and we're also going to create a moment when we cut the beam, right? That's just pretty standard structural analysis. So we have this axial force here, 6.5 kip. We also have a 6.5 here. And well, what kind of moment do we have at the, this point here at C? We're going to have 40 times 12, okay? So 40 times 12 minus 40 times 24, okay? And that is going to give us a 480 kip foot moment at the end. And we still have this 40 here. Okay, and we have A, B, and C. Okay, so now what do we do here? Well, if we're at C, okay, and we, we're, we're considering the section CB, so just before B, right? Uh, what's the moment here? If we, if we cut here, okay, and we take the moment here, what is the moment here going to be equal to? 480, there's no other external forces, there's just a moment. And that's what I mean by using little tricks here, okay? So it's just simply gonna be 480. So if we cut at, uh, this is the reel, we'll say. This was also the reel. Okay, for the virtual, for CB. Okay, if we go ahead and we cut at CB here, right, what are we going to get? Well, we have a uh, one kilonewton uh, foot moment here at the joint, all right? And if we just cut CB, what do we have? Well, we have CB here. We have a one over 30 kip force and a one over 30 kip force, okay? So there's no external mo force, so therefore the moment is zero. Finally, let's finish this up, and then we'll probably do a second part to this video, and uh, I'll show you how to do the integration after. So, finally, we have the segment DC, okay? And if we take the origin from D here, this is gonna make it a lot easier for us, is we can just go ahead and we can cut the beam like this, okay? We have our moment here. We have our D reaction for the real system, which is 38.5, and we have 1.5x, okay? This is the distance x. Okay, perfect, so uh, how do we take the moment here? Simple, sim just uh, simply solve the moment from here. Okay, so we have negative m, okay? We have minus 1.5x, x over two, and we have a positive moment of 38.5x, okay? So that means that m is equal to this here. Okay, just moving m to the other side of the equation. And uh, if we go ahead and simplify that, we're that is going to be our DC. So our DC is from zero to 30, obviously. Okay, because it's zero to 30. And we have 38.5x minus 1.5x squared over two. And if we do the, this is the real, the virtual, Okay, is simply going to be, if we take a look, we can just do this uh, kind of in our heads here. The, if we just cut here, take the moment, we have, all we have is one over 30 times 30, right? So that's just going to be, sorry, one over 30 and the distance variable x, the moment is simply just going to be x over 30. Perfect, okay, so uh, this is the table that we were looking for. Once this table is complete, the rest of the problem is pretty simple. Come back for the next video. We will solve for the integration.